Hi everybody, I'm Eleanor Shano, hoping that you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes, especially if you're still fighting the battle of the bulge. First up, astonishing new technology offers the kind of help you've been waiting for to shed those unwanted pounds once and for all. It's a brand new diagnostic tool that actually measures your metabolism even while you sleep and it will explain how efficiently you burn calories. Plus, an update on the gastric bypass patient we introduced you to earlier this year, and a brand new kind of cataract surgery that will allow patients to see both far and near. We'll have all that and more next on LifeQuest. Okay, we've all heard it before. Reason I can't lose weight is, well, I have a slow metabolism. No matter what I eat, it turns to fat. Now, is that true or false? Well, we're gonna find out right now, once and for all. Paula Frenetti here is going to be with us to prove scientifically whether you've been fooling yourself or not. Paula, I gotta tell you, when I first heard about MetaFitness, mm -hmm. I, I, I wasn't, it wasn't that I was skeptical, but I said, you know, I have to test this myself. I will tell you, and I'm telling my viewers right now, this is truly astonishing, it works. I have lived in this body for a long time, and little did I know how little I really knew about how it works. Explain yeah. what MetaFitness is all about. Well, MetaFitness is a way for people to get to know themselves by through, from the inside out, getting to know their metabolism. It's all about teaching people the secret to how to manage your weight or to lose weight for the long haul. But it tells you so many things. Uh, for example, I didn't realize that I burn 500 calories while I sleep at night. Isn't that amazing? Oh. That is, that's the best news in the world. Now, I want to introduce Jill Kawini cohen because Jill is going to be our, our demonstrator. This is very scientific. These are diagnostic tools. I want you to explain, and I, I've gone through this, so bear with us, all right? Well, Jill has actually gone through this as well. This is what's called an oxygen analyzer. It can measure how much oxygen you use when you're just breathing at rest, mm -hmm. and Jill, is going to go ahead and hold on to the mouthpiece here. We've already calibrated the machine so it knows how much oxygen is in the room. So now we're gonna connect this up. Go ahead, Jill, you can go ahead and stick that into your mouth here. And remember, you need to put the nose clip on so that all the air goes into the machine. And as she starts to breathe normally, the machine is now collecting how much oxygen she's breathing out. All right, we have so much to show you in a short period of time. We're gonna do this in TV time. Normally, this would be a 10, Ten minute. minute test. Correct. All right, after that, now you, you I, 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 as I said, I've been through this. So you are measured, you are, uh, Paula takes all your measurements, she weighs you, and then the next part, and this is the fun part. Okay, I think we can help you out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the armband, and this is phenomenal. This is incredible. You put the armband on, and I wore this mine. This is the armband yeah. here. Okay. Now, what this machine does is collect how many calories you burn at rest, whereas this, where you wear this 24 hours a day, this collects how many calories you burn over the 24 hour period. And again, here, Jill will go ahead and slip it on. You can go ahead and put it up high on the right arm. And what we do is we had Eleanor and Jill wear this for like four days because we wanted to see the pattern by which you're burning calories not only overnight but in activity during the day just sitting around. All right now Jill you did this uh, we'll, we'll tell that story in a minute she did it before she stopped smoking and she stopped smoking several months ago and uh, nine months ago nine oh, to the nine months four days <laughs> <That's> exactly <laughs> uh, and now she's going to go through this again to see how her metabolism has changed mm -hmm. but show the little button when you do a specific activity you push that button. For example, the first day I had mine on, I went grocery shopping. Right. So I pushed the button when I went into the store, pushed it when I left. 
I found out that I don't use many calories when I go grocery shopping. I burn up fewer when I cook dinner. But don't forget, Eleanor, you don't weigh much. A person who, it, how many calories you burn depends on how much you weigh and how, how hard you move. All right, now I want to show this. I, I, we don't have this on full screen, but this is the profile that I received. This is my personal profile. It tells everything, just the most amazing things about how my body functions. Um, let me see. Probably this like the second page in where it showed the pattern by which you were burning okay. calories. Okay, let's, I think we have a picture of that. This is really kind of difficult to, to bring it all into focus on, on, on television. This one, um, is this the one right here? Okay, let me hold this up. How I burn calories okay. during the day. Um, do you want to explain here the top mark? I, I burn most of my calories Later between, in the day, as we can see lunch here, and dinner, overnight, how many calories did it say there that you? Five hundred and eighty calories overnight, and it was from what times? It was. Mm, I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see. Oh, um, eight p.m. to eleven. No, that's not right. Okay, oh, this yep. is yeah. It doesn't really matter because this is my personal assessment. But and show what else it shows in here. I'll let you leave through. Sure, that, that would probably be easier. Well, as a summary, we could just probably go down the list here is okay. showing that what we found with Eleanor from the breathing test is that her metabolism is 43% faster than normal. You are above the trend for women in your age bracket. But also the reason is because we found out that um, my, my body heat is very high. That's right. That's right. And because it's so high, you need to eat, you are required to eat almost 1,600 calories. Your actual number is 1,570 calories that your body needs as a basis to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. Now, the armband showed that Eleanor Burns 1,804 calories on average over the days that she wore it. So between what she burns and how many calories she needs as a minimum is about three or 400 calories. Now, Eleanor does not need to lose weight, right? So for you, what we're finding out pretty much is that you need to eat around 1,800 calories to stay healthy. My pleasure, and maintain. my pleasure. I'm Absolutely. sure, I'm sure. Very happy That's to very do good that. news. Now, Jill, when you went through this, and, and you, you have an, uh, an interesting way to describe what this is. This is the... I call it the owner's manual for your body. For your body. Mm -hmm. You learned a lot about your I body. I certainly did. And Things I didn't know. Yeah, and you were smoking mm -hmm. pretty heavily. A uh, pack, pack and a half okay. a day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, since you've stopped, you're going to go through this again, mm -hmm. and it will show, a, a, obviously, a difference. Well, the first difference that we did see was before when Jill was smoking, her metabolic rate was above normal. It was about 23% mm -hmm. above. And what we know, nicotine is a metabolism stimulant, and it's an appetite suppressant. So Jill's very active. How far, how, you what? I, I run, well, jog about four and a half miles a day. So after she quit smoking, she did not change her activity. No. She's still doing the same thing. However, when we tested her the second time, her metabolic rate was 7% below normal. Mm -hmm. So what we are coming to the conclusion is, is that the cigarettes were helping to keep her metabolic rate above the average. What you, have, what, what you have learned, Paula, is that you're fooling yourself if you're starving yourself into losing weight. That's you true. must eat before in order to lose weight. Exactly, that's the exciting part about this is that food is fuel. And if you're an active person, like all three of us, mm -hmm. we need lots of fuel. And it's like what this, this metabolic efficiency profile does for people is identify for them how much they do. Mm -hmm. Once you know what you do, now you match you your adjust, food to absolutely. it. Absolutely, and, and, and it is so revealing. It is so scientifically sound. Mm -hmm. I have never seen anything like it, and i got to tell you, it has the life quest uh, seal of approval. <laughs> now, how do you get more information? Do uh, you have a website? Yes, we do. We have a website. It's at www.meta-fitness. Dot com. And we'll just throw out a phone number real fast. Too. Sure, it's 412-247-4957. 
Uh, We'd love I, to hear from you. Well, I want to thank you so much because this this is authentic. It, it really does work. It can help people not only lose weight but maintain their weight and stay healthy. And we like all of those things. Jill, thank you so much. And uh, you may remember we're going to talk a little bit more now about um, well, a very person that was. He was morbidly obese. We introduced you to this man uh, earlier this year, but he decided to take drastic measures where necessary to lose weight. Coming up, Lynn Sawyer is going to update us on the progress of gastric bypass surgery. His name is Quentin Arbogast. Stay with us. When we first introduced you to Quentin Arbogast, he weighed close to 700 pounds. Doctors had classified him as super obese. Well, he decided to undergo laparoscopic gastric bypass surgery. And Lynn Sawyer has been following his progress and here today with an update. And I, I'm just so anxious, 700 pounds. I know, it's so hard to believe. And you met him when he weighed 700 lovely, pounds. Lovely, lovely young man. I mean, just a terrific person. I had the chance to talk with Quentin again. And as a result of his surgery, he has shed hundreds of pounds. See for yourself. My surgery was November 17th of 2004. I think it went rather well. The recovery's been both long and, you know, it's also flying by rather quickly. Halfway there. And now, nearly a year and a half later, Quentin Arbogast is doing great. How much weight have you lost? Well, altogether, over the last year, 400 pounds. So 400 pounds in a year, 400 pounds in a year. So it's wow, that's amazing. That is amazing. Amazing because Quentin once weighed more than 700 pounds. Back then he could hardly walk and he rarely ventured outside his home in Waynesburg, Greene County. His computer was his only contact with the outside world. Losing weight had become not just a priority for Quentin, it was a matter of life or death. If I stay in this situation, you know, I'm, I'm going to die, whether it be, you know, tomorrow or next week or next month. Weeks after our interview in November of 2004, Quentin made the decision that would change and possibly save his life. He underwent laparoscopic gastric bypass surgery. <laughs> and today, he's not only lost weight. That's incredible. Oh, 388 and a half. Oh my God. He's doing things he hasn't done in yeah, years. Day, Simple yeah. things yeah. like walking and well, shopping. You know, get the kids ready for school. I, mean, I haven't Christmas shopped in years. And in the last couple of months, you know, I've been Christmas shopping, you know, numerous times, different stores. What did you think of it when you got there? Oh, oh, I was like, I was in awe, actually. You know, it was, it was really fun. You know, I'm a, I'm a shopaholic now, so. <laughs> You know, I'm looking forward to going back to uh, college now so I can get a job to support my new habit, <laughs> shopping. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I get to go to restaurants now, go out to eat. And when it comes to eating, well, he's made some big changes there, too. Are you able to eat much? Oh, I eat uh, eight to ten bites of food, at, you know, a meal, you know, whatever fills me up. I eat until I'm full. I find that the uh, 
well, you know, my, my pouch now is about the size of a human thumb, so there's not much room to fill up with a lot of things. What do you eat? Oh, I, I find myself eating a lot of fish lately, you know, and healthier foods, and that's the thing about my diet now is, you know, it allows me to enjoy food, and I actually taste food. His progress has been outstanding, but not unexpected. What vitamins are you taking? Uh, two multis a day. Dr. Joseph Colella is the bariatric surgeon who performed Quentin's gastric bypass. He says Quentin's made a lot of progress, but he needs to make more. Although he has done extremely well and already overcome a number of, of, of challenges in the post-operative period, including already having some plastic surgery done to get rid of a, a large excess amount of skin, um, he still has a lot to do and a long way to go to get where he wants to get. The fact that he was in bed and not able to walk and now he's able to go Christmas shopping and be in the malls for extended periods of time is fantastic, but it is not the end result. And, you know, he's very well aware of that. What happens if he overeats, if he doesn't follow his post-operative protocol? We all have to make sure that he understands the cookies that stay away from, the chocolates, the high-fat dairy products, the regular sweetened sodas. They, you have to stay away from those. He doesn't have to stay away from them for the rest of his life. And in some sense, moderation down the road is going to be the answer. But right now, while we're still in the throes of this battle, if you will, uh, he really has to be aggressive about stamping it out. It's unbelievable, amazing every day just to look at him and see how happy, how full of life he is. Quentin's fiance left her job so she could take care of him after surgery. Patricia Carson says the weight loss has given Quentin a new outlook. Yeah, he used to wake up depressed, sad, never didn't want to get out of bed. Now it's, he's the first one up trying to get me up and he's very happy. It's great. What's been the biggest change for you? Oh my goodness, I used to do a lot to help him and um, tie shoes, the littlest things, from the littlest things you don't think about, but then when you're not doing them anymore, it's, wow, you know, he can do everything on his own. How has it been psychologically for him? That's been tough. It has. Um, I can't imagine. You know, me losing 20 pounds, that's okay. For me to lose half my body weight, I couldn't imagine what he's going through um, all his life, being stared at criticized, ridiculed, and now he can go to the store and people look at him. They don't look at him with disgust anymore. It's more of a smile and hi. I notice that the public, they recognize me more as opposed to, you know, looking away. You know, they'll establish eye contact, they'll they'll speak and you know this is some it's not the way it should be but you know since I've lost so much weight you know I I think they see me as quote unquote normal now you're notching your belt yes I'm notching my belt now I've cut off at least eight to ten inches from the so it would be out to bit. here yeah so oh my yeah. now I have to make my own little homemade notches in it Quentin still needs to lose another 100 pounds or so, but his doctor is optimistic that will happen in time. I think that he'll be very close to where he wants to be in another you know, 10 to 12 months. But there's going to be some part of this, some part at the end, the last 15% or so that he's expecting to lose, that's really going to have to be done through a combination of surgery, plastic surgery, um, not cosmetic plastic surgery, but excess skin. Mm -hmm. Surgery that, that involves removing skin that's causing infections or that's in, impeding his ability to walk or to do the exercises he may need to do. And then the other part of that 15% weight loss that he's going to have to do at the end is going to be through exercise. We'd like to get married. We're going to wait until he's, both of us are comfortable walking down the aisle with the way we look and the way we feel. He wants to be able to dance at his wedding. Are you excited? How would you characterize the whole thing? Emancipated. I am free now. I am very liberated now. And it's only getting better by the day.
emancipated. I like that. Clinton has come a long way since the days when he wasn't able to do the things most of us take for granted. He couldn't work, shop, go to the movies, or even drive a car. But today, Clinton's not only planning to renew his driver's license, he's also hoping to go back to college, as you heard him say. Lynn, that is, that is just such a beautiful story, such a beautiful couple. By agreeing to share his story with you, do you feel that he's setting himself up as somewhat of a role model? Well, not exactly. Quentin kind of believes that it's an individual decision, that this surgery is very serious, mm -hmm. and he doesn't want to influence others, but he's happy to share his experience. And he said he doesn't necessarily want to be thought of as a role model because it truly is an individual choice. Well, it's a story of inspiration and hope, and it was a beautiful Lovely story. Lovely couple. Thanks for bringing it Thank you. to us. Well, I um, have another kind of surgery that we're going to be talking about. It's a new type of cataract surgery, allowing the patient to see both near and far. That's coming up next on LifeQuest. Did you know that more than two and a half million people in the United States have cataract surgery every year? It's one of the most frequently performed surgeries and one of the safest you can have. And, but there are some advances in the procedure that now, believe it or not, allow you to see both near and far. And guess who's here to tell us all about it? Our favorite Dr. Depinder Dollywall. Welcome back. It's always a pleasure to, oh. to, to see you. Thank you so and much. And we've told our viewers, and everybody knows, that once you reach the magic age of 40, something happens to your eyes, right? Indeed, indeed. You lose the ability to see up close. Mm -hmm. So when cataracts develop, we traditionally had monofocal lenses, meaning? lens implants, meaning they focused at one distance. Which and is usually distance. Far, yeah. Typically people choose far. And therefore, and <laughs> you have to have a pair of readers with you all the time. Exactly, exactly. Which can be pretty frustrating. Um, you know, if you forget your glasses, it's hard to even sign a check or order from the menu. So, now we have advanced lens implant designs that allow patients to see near and far. That is just amazing. And it's working. Absolutely. Works very, very well. I'd explain what, it's, it's like having bifocals implanted in your eye. Very similar to that. So the, there's uh, two types that are FDA approved in terms of the multifocal lenses. Mm -hmm. And they each have rings that are etched into the surface of the implant. And because of those different rings, you have different um, focusing areas. All right, you have, you, you, she always comes with her eyeballs. <laughs> this is my favorite <laughs> prop. And basically, as you remember, um, a cataract is a clouding of the lens in the eye. And the lens sits behind the cornea here. So we replace, the, we remove the you lens. take it out, right? We remove it, yes. You and crunch then, it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, in, in a sense. And pull it out. <laughs> and, and we do it through a small incision. So mm -hmm. yes, indeed, we, we break it up into small pieces and then we remove it and we then replace it with a lens implant. So the surgery itself is not 
different. It's the lens implant that's different. That's different. Oh. Yes, it is. All right, my, my next question, I'm sure a lot of viewers out there are thinking to the same question. Okay, I've had cataract surgery. I can see well at a distance. I have to have the readers. Should I go back in and have another surgical procedure? I would recommend no. I don't think it's worth the risk of an intraocular lens implant exchange mm. to, to access this new technology. But this has proven to be very successful. It is safe. I was surprised to learn that cataract surgery is among the safest of all sur surgical procedures. And when, when, when a patient is in your hands, that even takes it one step further. <laughs> How many of these new procedures have, have you done? Uh, I've done between 50 and 100 now. So yes. when a patient comes to you now, is it an option? Do they, do patients ever choose just to have the monofocal? Absolutely. If you have any type of ocular pathology, so glaucoma, macular degeneration, things like that. Ah, oh, all right. So, is, so if you present with glaucoma, you don't want to do this? Correct. Correct. You need to have healthy eyes except for the cataract so that you have the best optical quality because there are some side effects with this implant. You do see some glare and halo at night, occasional starburst, but it's worth that. For, for some people, it's worth the, the trade-off to have the freedom. If you live long enough, are cataracts just something you can't escape? Yes, absolutely. So you, you cannot escape them. It's part of just being blessed with a long life. And fortunately, we have wonderful technology that can mm -hmm. remove the cataract safely. And now we have exciting technology that can, you can get an upgraded implant, which insurance does not pay for. It is an out-of-pocket expense. So you have to choose to upgrade to this implant. So the new implant is not covered by insurance. Correct. Well, the other thing that just occurred to me is that uh, business should be booming in, in your department with all the baby boomers <laughs> getting older. <laughs> They're going to be lined up for their cataract surgery. Indeed, indeed. Well, it is always a pleasure. And thank you for bringing, you always bring us the newest, latest technology. And it is such a pleasure to see you again. And can I share with my viewers your personal news? Absolutely. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I said to Dr. Dolly, well, what's new? And she said, well, what's new is my eight month old baby girl. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much, thank you. Well, now, if you would like more information about anything you've seen here on LifeQuest, just check out our website at wqed.org, or you can always reach us by just calling on the phone, 412-622-1575. Hey, make sure to leave your name and phone number so we can you know, be able to get back to you. We always want to call you back. I want to thank all of my guests for joining me today. We hope you stay connected with each of us every week. I'm Eleanor Shano. Remember the good years start here. Be well, everyone, and I'll see you soon.